just started. I just started the stream. Um, all right, that's weird. Going good. Okay, but I'm not. Oh, there it okay, is. Okay, there it is. Okay, okay. so it was, we're, just, it was massive. We got about a 30, 30 second. second delay. Delay. Okay, cool. Okay. What's the password? What's up? Oh, um, wisdom. W one S D zero M. Now you can. Now you have full power to install any software you want, any computer you want. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our librarian is Betty Carter. Our primary team coaches are Karen Waite and Charlie Rockleman. Our primary team consists of Tiger Alvarez, Colin Armstrong, Addison Wright, Darcy Brock, Anna Horton, Dodge Pressler, Jonah Reed. Our intermediate coaches are myself, Donald Jackson, and Lori Sloan. Our team consists of Lucero Gano, Kaylee Chavez, Ulises Gonzalez, Logan Perrin, Bella Rivas, Iker Sachet Abrita, and Manny Winans. Go Rockets! Our primary team is Sunny Beckerman, MJ Bentley, Logan Goodell, Maria Luke, Destiny Ziba, Layla Robinson, and Katie Strange. Our intermediate team is Alyssa Bartlett, Emma Bolin, Kyle Tackley, Skyler Gordon, Rose Lawson, Lucy Link, and Kaylee McWilliams. Our coaches are Lindsay Turner and Debbie Wickenweeder, and I am coached by Yellow Cruz and Tanner. Go Wildcats. Hall of Fame Science Elementary. 
Our crystal is Lisa Walker. Our librarian is Susan Wright. Our primary team is Joel Butterworth, Brooklyn Carney, Peyton Carney, Sophia Cohen, John Hoffman, Macy Hughes, and Jackson Wilson. Our primary coaches are Gary Mason and Gary McGarren. Our intermediate team is Olivia Bench, Riley Holmes, Marshall Kimberl, Riley Lawler, Olivia Olson, Sidney Vasquez, and Chloe Yard. And our intermediate coaches are Nina Johnson and Susan Sixth. That's the project. are Kennedy Guess, Ella McMahon, Kenny Pham, Stephen Pham, Ian Settlemeyer, Tyler Soignier, and Addison Wellborn. Porter, Porter, Porter! Good morning. Our school is Academy at Cary Francis Thomas. Our principal is Dr. Sabrina Lindsay, and our librarian is Tara Green. Our primary team consists of Noel Carrillo, Blessing, Cayambe, Elijah Martin, Caleb Jaramillo, Giovanni Becerra, Dalton Ritz, Wrights, actually, sorry, Brandon Alvarez, and our coaches for primary, Brooke Shields and Glenda McCumber. Our intermediate team is comprised of Allegra Conte, Jacob McCoy, Stephen Delgado, Kenzie Shrek, Jackson Turner, Jonah Hakim, Seth Harlows, and our coaches are myself, Erlinda McGuire Rios, and Kim Saylor. Go Tigers. Good morning, I'm here to represent Foster Village Elementary. Our principal is Sherry Gamble. Our librarian is Kay Pelletier. Our primary team consists of Victoria Gersak, Christopher Haverda, Destiny Hernandez, Violet Terran, Zoe Vickerman, Aubrey Walsh, Riley Walsh. Our intermediate team consists of Brandon Bowie, Marley Haverda, Jacob Hicks, Max Conijo, Rhea Rajesh, Layla Sanders. Our coaches are Meredith Conlandy, Cindy Sawai, Leah Stevenson, and myself, Elizabeth Tanner. Go Foxes! Good morning, 
in Barville ISD. We are Northridge Elementary School. Our principal is Deborah Colson. Our librarian is Heather Mattis and Michael Williams. Our primary team consists of Reese Angel, Spencer, Spencer Archurio, Hazel Espinoza, Sammy Lightoff, Ava Miser, Nora Schramm, Elena Uribe. Our intermediate team is Savannah Ford, Gracie Garber, Lydia Garza, Lauren Hoover, Ray Jaramillo, Ethan Shadman, and Avery Wells. Our coaches, Ashley Armstrong, Jessica Dunham, Paige Henderson, and myself, Stephanie Jackson. We are the Longhorns. Good morning, we are Spicer Elementary. Our principal is Dr. Cheryl Waddell. Our library media specialist is Tara Doty. Our primary team consists of Anaya Tishwaka, Aaron Trong, McKenna Morsi, Alex Saipasrith, Arianne Risher, Avery Ackerman, and Easton Mills. Our primary coaches are Lynn Goodman, Kathy Linehan, and myself, Melanie Fink. Our intermediate team is Cameron Morgan, Eva Wood, Kyle Lunton, Christopher Hernandez, Tony Hong, Kaylin McGee, and Katie Lee. Our intermediate coaches are Yulia Kilgore and Linda Risto. Go Colts! Good morning, I'm representing Green Valley Elementary School. Our principal is Don Demas. Our librarians are Heather Mattis and Micah Williams. Our primary team is coached by Diane Grotto and Carrie Growald. And they are Akash Chand, Lauren Olson, Benjamin Growald, Addison Mata, Scarlett Hillhouse, Vivian Thompson, and Annabelle Walker. Our intermediate team is coached by Jenny Wasserman and myself, Beth Mann, and the team consists of Silas Peterson, Ruth Peterson, Stacy Jennings, Olivia Shelbourne, Philip Benham, Hazley Cowart, and Mallory Hoffman. Go Gators! Good morning, we are Walker Creek. A, our principal is Marsha Perry. Our librarian is Susan Smith. Our primary team members are Molly Carpenter, Claire Comstock, Kaylise Duke, AJ Holman, Molly McCraner, Carson Mitchell, and Colby Smith. Their coaches are Joanne Webster and Jana Smith. Our intermediate team members are Brooklyn Bounds, Chase Comstock, Tylee Duke, Haley Keener, Juliana LaPuma, Casey Mitchell, and Addison Villarreal. The intermediate coaches are myself, Nicole Anderson, and Robin Landers. Go Coyotes! Let's give one more great big hand to all of these great team members. Okay, boys and girls, now a lot of people have helped you get where you are today. Coaches, teachers, your librarians, your principal, and most of all, your parents. So how about you giving all of those people a big round of applause and a thank you a bunch. Fantastic. Okay, you know that at Battle of the Books, we have a tradition every year to recognize our people and how many years they've been on Battle of the Books teams. So let's just go ahead and start off. If this is your first year on a Battle of the Books team, would you please stand up and let us recognize you? Wow, congratulations. Okay, you may have a seat. How about if 
this is your second year. Great job. Wow. Do we have anyone that it's their third year? Oh my goodness. Wow. Surely, do we have anyone that it's their fourth year? Wow, congratulations. Okay, well, we're going to try this one. Anyone, it's your fifth year. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Okay, we're going to try this. Anyone, six years. Anyone? from kinder to fifth grade. Wow, congratulations. That's always one of my favorite parts of Battle of the Books. Congratulations, guys. You put in a lot of hard work to make your teams. Okay. Let's talk a little bit today about the competition rules. And this will just remind us and help all of our friends and guests who are here today. First, let me start off by letting you know that my name is Kelly Montgomery. I'll be your moderator today. I'm the Director of Digital Learning and Library Services. I have friends here today to help me. Okay, let's start right down there at the end. These will be your scorekeepers. So, starting with Jennifer Canizares, who's our coordinator of elementary digital learning. <laughs> Jeff Samuelson, one of our elementary specialists. You may have seen these people on your campus. We also have some very good timekeepers. We have Tony Highlander and Shelly Lansford. Now out on the floor to help facilitate you with your car, your challenge cards, and just anything you need, we have Taylor Williams, who's our coordinator of secondary digital learning. He's waving right over there. We have Trista Blazer. Where's Trista? There she is, way over there. We have Michael Hansen, one of our secondary specialists, and Owen Nesbitt, a secondary specialist. So these are all of the people who are going to be helping you today. Okay. We have one team from each school. We have a primary team, K through three, and an intermediate team, four through five. Am I correct? Okay, give me a thumbs up. So for today's competition, we will have the primary team go first in their first round with 20 questions. Then we'll take a snack and a restroom break and then we'll have our intermediate round. Now, we are giving and awarding a first, second, and third place trophies to the primary teams and the intermediate teams. And then we will have, with a combination of scores from both teams, an overall Battle of the Books 2020 champion. Now, we'll do our two rounds and if at the end of those rounds we actually have more than one team that's tied, we will have a tiebreaker round. Now, 
I am going to read each question how many times? Awesome. And you will have, now you won't start discussing with your team until I've read it the second time, correct? You'll have 20 teams with your, 20 seconds with your team to decide your answer. And then when we say time is up, show your answer, the team captain will show the card to the librarian that's at your table. Has to be the team captain, right? Now, your librarian will let you and everyone else, and especially our scorekeepers know if you got the answer correct. So a big yellow card held way up high means you got the answer correct, and that's worth one point. And if you didn't quite get it this time, you'll have a blue card that they'll hold up, okay? Challenges. What color is the challenge card? Red. All right, so after I give the answer, you and your team will have 10 seconds to decide if you want to challenge that book. If you do, all you have to do is get your team captain to hold that red card up very, very high. If no one challenges, I will say after 10 seconds, that's all the time for challenges, and we'll go on to the next question. Don't forget, questions that have quotation marks we're not allowed to challenge. How many challenge cards do you have, primary team? Fantastic. How many challenge cards do you have, intermediate team? Oh my goodness, you guys are so brilliant. It's like you've practiced all of this. All right. couple of things we want to remember. First of all, be a great teammate. And not just to your team, but be kind to the other teams that are around you. Play fair, but have fun. We're here to have fun. Everybody take a deep breath. Let it out and say, I'm gonna have fun. Fantastic. Okay, we'd like to remind all of our guests, if you would, silence your cell phones, and also remind all of our guests that we, we, want, we would ask that you don't say or do anything that might give away an answer to a team. Um, boys and girls, one more thing about um, once we release the intermediate team to go to the back and then primary when you're sitting in the back of the room. Go, remember to be a great teammate. You want to, you don't want to be reading, you don't want to be rustling paper back there, you don't want to be talking, you want to be watching your teammates in their round, okay? Now, Remember that we are live on YouTube today. See all of these people with the cameras? Yes, wave. And guests in the audience, if you would like, you're more than welcome to send this address, tinyurl.com slash BISD Bob 2020 to any family members who couldn't be here today, friends, um, you're welcome to send those. And if you are uh, on Twitter or Facebook and you'd like to tag today's competition, our hashtag is BISD Bob 2020. Well, I think I'm about ready to go. So, Intermediate team, you may go back to your chairs. Primary team, 
Get ready. All right, finish getting those papers the way that you want them. Turn to your teammates and say, we got this. All right, we are ready for the primary round. Question number one. Remember, let me read it twice and then you can start discussing. Here we go. Question one, in which book is a prized possession kept safe by friends while a character was away? In which book is a prized possession kept safe by friends while a character was away? Time is up. Okay. Team captains, show your answer. The answer is the bear and the piano. Great job, guys. Great job. Okay. Um, a librarian, to be sure and hold your card up high, please. Your stick up high. And just keep that up until Jeff and Jennifer let us know that we can put those down. All right, cards down. Question two. In which book did an invention lead to the ruin of a magnificent attraction? In which book did an invention lead to the ruin of a magnificent attraction?
Time's up. Show your answers, please. And the answer is goldfish on vacation. No more challenges. Our librarian's arms are usually tired by the end of this day. Okay, cards down. Question. Number three, in which book is a character referred to as the Man of Steel? In which book is a character referred to as the Man of Steel? Time's up, show your answer please. The answer is one proud penny. Ooh, great job guys. Great thinking. Cards down, nice job. Next question. In which book are shrubs cut and shaped to resemble a character? In which book are shrubs cut and shaped to resemble a character? up show your answers please and the answer is King Hugo's huge ego time for challenges is up Score cards down. Thank you. Next question. In which book does the author use adjectives to describe underwear? In which book does the author use adjectives to describe underwear? Time's up, show your answers. The answer is John, Paul, George, and Ben. Wow, fantastic. You are so smart. Very good, scorecards down. Next question. In which book is school attendance not possible for all children? In which book is school attendance not possible for all children?
time to show your answers. The answer is one hen. How one small loan made a difference. Scorecards down. Next question. In which book does a clothesline line reveal unlikely possibilities? In which book does a clothesline line reveal unlikely possibilities? Time's up, show your answers please. And the answer is, the word collector. Time for challenges is up. Great. Scorecards down. Next question. In which book do certain characters' actions mirror the actions of others? In which book do certain characters' actions mirror the actions of others? Time's up. Show your answers, please. And the answer is blueberries for Sal. Blueberries for Sal. Time for challenges is up. Before we said it, okay. Mullendore has a challenge. And before I said time's up, okay. And also 113 has a challenge. Okay, so boys and girls, during the challenge, you'll have a seat. A librarian, judge, or two will go to the challenge tables with their timer. The team will have three minutes to convince the judge. Yes, I do. And there's the question again. And everyone else, you may put your scorecards down. Oh my goodness, you guys are being so kind to the people who are having the challenge, doing the challenges. You're so quiet and letting them think. Nice job.
I think you should all give yourselves a mosquito clap for being so good and kind. Way to go. Yay. Congratulations. Way to go. Great job, guys. So, librarian, judges at each table, if you'll help us um, get the challenge cards up really high so we don't miss them, if you can help us with that, that would be great. All right, next question. In which book does the author inform the reader? Quotes, it's a completely true made up story. In which book does the author inform the reader it's a completely true made up story? Time, please show your answers. And remember, this one has quotes, so we can't challenge on this one. Here we go. The answer is Goldfish on Vacation. Goldfish on Vacation. Wow, that was a tricky one. Scorecards down, please. Thank you. Next question. In which book is the night compared to octopus ink? In which book is the night compared to octopus ink? Time's up, show your answers please. And the answer is, Dad and the Dinosaur. <laughs> Way to go. All right, scorecards down. Good job guys. Can you believe we're halfway through our questions? Oh my goodness, here we go. In which book does a character get bigger by acting smaller? In which book does a character get bigger by acting smaller?
time is up. Please show your answers. The answer is King Hugo's huge ego. We have one challenge. One more challenge. One more challenge and no more challenges. Score cards may go down. Okay, we're at our three minutes. Oh, good try, guys. Good try. Thank you. You may put your scorecard down. Oh, good try, guys. Good try. Good try. All right. Everyone ready? Thumbs up. Here we go. Next question. In which book does a story begin with poverty and end with abundance for many? In which book does a story begin with poverty and end with abundance for many?
time's up. Show your answers, please. The answer is one hen. How a small loan made a difference. Okay, two challenges. Okay, no more challenges. We have three challenges. Okay, great. Be sure and leave those sticks up so that our scorekeepers... 109. Major Cheney, can you hold your stick up really high, please? Thank you. I can do that. Okay, you may put your scorecards down. You may put your sticks down. Mrs. Wright, do you want to put your stick down? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Oh my goodness, pat yourself on the back for being so kind to those people who are challenging. Great job. Good try. Good try. All right. Okay, great. You may put your um, scorecard down. Good try, guys. Good try. Good try. All right. Let's get ready for the next question. Question 13. In which book do posters and newspaper clippings show a span of time? In which book do posters and newspaper clippings show a span of time?
time is up. Show your answers, please. And the answer is the bear and the piano. The bear and the piano. One challenge. No more challenges. Okay, you may put your scorecards down. Thank you. You guys are blowing my mind at how great you're, you are. Can you blow your mind? Blow your mind. Just blowing my mind. You're so awesome. Okay, good try, guys. Good try. Next question.
In which book is trespassing necessary for survival? In which book is trespassing necessary for survival? Time. Please show your answers. The answer is a different pond. <laughs> Time for challenges up. Okay, scorecards down. Next question. Here we go. In which book do feelings of jealousy lead to an act of thoughtfulness? In which book do feelings of jealousy lead to an act of thoughtfulness? Time, please show your answers. The answer is those shoes. Those shoes. Time for challenges up. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, I think our time for challenge was up. Ms. Studhatton, did we get it in just in time? Okay, just wasn't high enough. Great. Okay. David E. Smith has a challenge. Do we still need our cards up? Okay. Scorecards can come down. You may put your cards down.
three minutes. Oh, good try, guys. Good try. Here we go. Next question. In which book do characters plan an accident? In which book do characters plan an accident? Time, please show your answers. And the answer is Hattie and Hudson. <laughs> Time for challenges up. Great, you may put your scorecards down. Next question. In which book is 25 considered retirement age? In which book is 25 considered retirement age? Time is up. Please show your answers. The answer is one proud penny. One proud penny. Great job, guys. You may put your scorecards down. Great job. That was some good thinking. Here we go. In which book does an embarrassingly loud voice become valuable? In which book does an embarrassingly loud voice become valuable? Time, please show your answers. The answer is John Paul George and Ben. <laughs> Yay. Wow. You may put your cards down. Question 19. In which book is a hobby enriched by careful organization? In which book is a hobby enriched by careful organization? Please 
please show your answers? And the answer is the word collector. The word collector. Time for challenges is up. Great, you may put your scorecards down. Oh my goodness. Question 20. Here we go. In which book do acting skills help a character to achieve a goal? In which book do acting skills help a character to achieve a goal? Time, please show your answers. And the answer is Hattie and Hudson. <laughs> One challenge and a challenge in the back as well. One more challenge, and the time for challenges ended. Everyone keep your scorecards up for me, please. So we have three challenges. Okay, everyone who's not challenging, make their voices super quiet. Super quiet. Show me what that voice looks like. It's super quiet. Good job. cards to come down. Yes. You may put your scorecards down. Thank you.
put your scorecard down. You're good. Way to go, Rogue Runners. Good try, you guys. Good try. Thank you, Miss Smith. Oh, good try, guys. Good try, Cheney. Good try, WT. Oh, my goodness. Give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> Fantastic job. Okay, everyone stay where you are for just one minute. Stay where you are because we are about to announce the favorite primary book that you voted on. Are you ready? Here we go. The favorite primary book is John, Paul, George, and Ben. And look, here's the author. He made you a video. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can hear him. Hey kids of West Birdville Elementary, this is Lane Smith, author illustrator of John, Paul, George, and Ben. And thank you for bestowing this honor on me for my book. I'm here at the Paul Revere House in Austin, Massachusetts. Wait a minute, I should do this officially. I'm here at the Paul Revere House Boston, Massachusetts, where just moments ago, the head of the museum handed me one of Paul Revere's original artifacts. You could see his name is written on it. Now, he was a great silversmith. I don't know, maybe there'll be samples of his silversmithing in here, or maybe some of his music lessons from when he was a bell ringer. That was very funny, right? Okay, guess what time it is? It is break time and snack time. You have 25 minutes and when we come back, we'll do the intermediate rounds.
probably going to be that by the time we finish the intermediate. Yeah, that has two John cars.
good on our... Yeah, we're good. All right, we're at our two minute warning. We need our intermediate teams to begin making their way to their tables. Please. Loud kitty. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Intermediate Round. Give yourselves a hand. So give me a thumbs up if your cards are ready. Give me a thumbs up if you you are ready. Turn to your teammates and say, let's do this. All right. Here we go. Okay, we need to... Make sure everyone has two challenge cards.
Is there any team that does not have two? Thank you. Okay, guys, remember that you only have 10 seconds after I give the answer to decide if you want to challenge. And if you do want to challenge, that card needs to be really high, okay? Hold it up really, really high. Team captain. All right. Let's get this party started. Question one. In which book is a book of fairy tales the key to going home? In which book is a book of fairy tales the key to going home? Time, please show your answers. The answer is Bob. No more challenges. You may lower your scorecards. Question number two. In which book do unused travel tickets infer that a reunion was planned? In which book do unused travel tickets infer that a reunion was planned? Time, please show your answer. And the answer is Blooming at the Texas Sunrise Motel. Okay, great. Scorecards down. Next question. Boy, y'all are doing such a good job. In which book do inventions of new equipment contribute to a catastrophe? In which book do inventions of new equipment contribute to a catastrophe? Time, please show your answers. The answer is Voices of the Dust Bowl. Challenge, challenge. Time's up for challenges. We need no more than two librarians at on this side and no more than two here.
Sorry. Thank you. Are you ready? Yes. You may put your scorecards down. Fantastic. Great job, guys. One toy. Great. You can put your scorecard down. Bless you. guys are doing such a good job of being patient and kind to the team that's really working on their challenge. Great job. Time's up. Oh, good try, guys. Good try. All right. Next question. In which book are adults mistaken for children? In which book are adults mistaken for children? Time, please show your answers. And the answer is The Legend of Podkin, one ear. Time for challenges is up. Okay, scorecards down. Next question. In which book does a character's last name mean pig? In which book does a character's last name mean pig? Please show your answers. The answer is 
The Tale of Despero. And this one had a quote, so no challenges on this one. Okay, cards down, next question. In which book is the main character told that when someone acts irresponsibly, they should focus, quote, on the people who are trying to do the right thing? In which book is the main character told that when someone acts irresponsibly, they should focus quote, on the people who are trying to do the right thing. Time. Please show your answers. The answer is soar, soar. Remember that one had a quote, so no challenges on this one. Okay, scorecards down. Next question. In which book is the story presented in a compare-contrast pattern? In which book is the story presented in a compare-contrast pattern? Time. Please show your answers. The answer is now and Ben, the modern inventions of Benjamin Franklin. Time for challenges is up. Score cards down. Next question. In which book is a character discarded while napping? In which book is a character discarded while napping? Time. Please show your answers. The answer is Mr. Wolf's class. Great job, guys. Great job. Okay, scorecards down.
Next question. In which book does a change from rodent to raptor signal a comeback? In which book does a change from rodent to raptor signal a comeback? Time. Please show your answers. The answer is soar. Soar. One challenge, two, three. Time for challenges up. Sorry. Great. You may put your scorecards down. Okay. Oh, good try, guys. Good try, Birdville. Way to go. Good job, guys. Woo. 
Nice job. All right. Next question. In which book does a character keep cleaning with little success? In which book does a character keep cleaning with little success? Time, please show your answer. The answer is Voices of the Dust Bowl. One, two challenges. Three, four, time, four challenges up. You may put your scorecards down.
Congratulations. That's great, guys. Okay. Question 11. In which book does a ramp reveal a softened heart? In which book does a ramp reveal a softened heart? Time. Please show your answers. The answer is Blooming at the Texas Sunrise Motel. One ten. Time for challenges is over. Okay, great. Scorecards down. Here we go. In which book is a climate change caused by a lost character? In which book is a climate change caused by a lost character? Please show your answers. The answer is Bob. Nice job. Okay, scorecards down, please. Nice job, everyone. Next question. In which book are a character's accomplishments depicted on cobblestones? In which book are a character's accomplishments depicted on cobblestones? Time. Please show your answers. And the answer is Now and Ben, the modern inventions of Benjamin Franklin. Time for challenges is up. Okay. All right, scorecards down. Here we go. In which book does a hero's journey begin with the destruction of a home? In which book does a hero's journey begin with the destruction of a home? Time. Please show your answers. And the answer is Podkin. <laughs> wow. Great thinking, guys. 
You may put your scorecards down. In which book can the antagonist creep into the smallest of spaces? In which book can the antagonist creep into the smallest of spaces? Time is up. And the answer is Voices of the Dust Bowl. Challenge. Hold that card up really high, please. Okay, no more challenges. Time is up. Okay, if you are a team that is not challenging, would you please have a seat? Teams that are challenging, if you'll stand up. We still need a librarian for 114 for Hardeman. Also, Holiday Heights. Everyone, you may put your scorecards down. We still need a librarian at Richland Elementary, please. technical assistance. See, it's right there. Blue light is not.
Good try, Hardiman. Thank you. Are we ready, everyone? Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you are ready. Then here we go. In which book are books and cereal retrieved in the same manner? In which book are books and cereal retrieved in the same manner? Time. Please show your answers. And the answer is Now and Ben, the modern inventions of Benjamin Franklin. One challenge. No more challenges at this time. You may put your scorecards down.
try, guys. Good try. All right. Next question. In which book do flying messages bring different emotions at the beginning versus the end? In which book do flying messages bring different emotions at the beginning versus the end? Time. Please show your answer. And the answer is Mr. Wolf's class. One challenge. No more challenges this time. You may put your scorecards down. Thank you. Good try, Cheney. Good try.
Thank you. You may put your scorecard down. Here we go. In which book does a transportation device become the object of a crime and a form of art? In which book does a transportation device become the object of a crime and a form of art? Time. Please show your answers. And the answer is Blooming at the Texas Sunrise Motel. One challenge, two challenges. No more challenges. You may put your scorecards down. You may put your scorecards down. Bless you. Oh, good try, good try, Snow Heights.
Thank you. You may put your scorecard down. Okay, time. Good try. Good try, Walter Creek. Good try. All right. Two more questions. Here we go. In which book do readers learn that, quote, an interesting fate awaits almost everyone who does not conform? In which book do readers learn that, quote, an interesting fate awaits almost everyone who does not conform? Please show your answers. And the answer is The Tale of Despero. And remember, that one had quotes, so no challenges for that one. You guys are such good thinkers. Okay, scorecards down, please. And we are to the final question. Here we go. In which book? Does a letter in an envelope seem to bring misery to those who hold it? In which book does a letter in an envelope seem to bring misery to those who hold it? Time. Please show your answers. And the answer is Bob. One, two, three, four. Challenges. No more challenges. Okay, remember, if you are not challenging, make your voice really quiet so that those people who are challenging can think. Okay, you may put down your scorecards. You may put down your scorecards.
try, Smithville. Good try. Good try. Oh, good try, Spicer. Good try. Are we done? All right. Guess what? It's the end of the intermediate round. Congratulations, great, great job. All right, guess what we get ready for the favorite intermediate book. Make your voices super quiet. Here comes the announcement. You voted. The favorite intermediate book was. And guess what? The author sent you a video. Hello from the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for choosing Pokin as your favorite book. I'm so pleased you all like it. Uh, I hope you have an amazing time at the Battle of the Books. Sounds like a brilliant event. I wish I could be there. Good luck, everybody. Have fun and keep on reading. Bye-bye. Great job. All right. Now, as we tabulate the winners, we would like for you to chill out and we would like to invite the primary team to return to your team's table with your intermediate team Okay, coaches, please help us get our teams situated and ready for the awards announcement.
we are going to announce first the primary, the, win, the primary first, second, and third place teams, then the intermediate first, second, and third place teams, and we have an overall Battle of the Books winner. After we finish the awards, if your team is to receive a trophy, what we'd like for you to do is stay at your table and we will call your name, your team's name. We'd like for you to come up and receive your trophy and have your picture taken with our superintendent of schools, Dr. Daryl Brown. And before we start, let's just all look at each other and say, great job. You are all magnificent. All right. We'll start with third place in, for the primary team. We actually have a tie of four teams. The first third place team is Watauga Elementary. Congratulations. The next third tie for third place in primary is Foster Village. The next tie for third place in the primary division is Snow Heights Elementary. And our last tie for third place in the primary division is Major Cheney Elementary. All right, we have a two-way tie for second place in the primary divi division. The first team is Green Valley Elementary. And the second team is West Birdville Elementary. First place in the primary division is a tie between two teams. The first team is O.H. Stowe Elementary. And the second team is W.A. Porter Elementary. Congratulations to all of our primary teams. All right, intermediate. We have a three-way tie for third place in intermediate division. The first team is Green Valley Elementary. The second team is David E. Smith Elementary. And the third tie for third place in the intermediate division is Foster Village. In second place for the intermediate division, we have a tie of two teams, Northridge Elementary and Walker Creek Elementary. We have one first place winner of the intermediate division, and that is W.A. Porter Elementary. And our 2020 Battle of the Books winner is W.A. Porter Elementary. Yeah. 
Congratulations, Porter. All right, if you are receiving a trophy, what we'd like to do, we'll call you up. You'll come. Uh, Mr. Thomas, where would you like to take the pictures? Just right here in the middle? Okay. So we'll have a team that comes up taking their picture, and then, but we'll also call a team to be ready. Okay? So third place, primary. Watauga Elementary, please come forward. Foster Village, be waiting in the wings, please. If you're not receiving a trophy, please feel free to stay or you are dismissed. Snow Heights, you'll be right after Foster Village. Please come forward, Snow Heights. And Major Cheney primary team, you'll be right after Snow Heights. And they can take their trophy with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Foster Village is up, Snow Heights is next, and Major Cheney, primary team, we need you right behind Foster, uh, Snow Heights please, Major Cheney, primary team. Major Cheney, right behind Snow Heights, please. Fantastic. Congratulations, Foster Village. All right, Snow Heights. Okay, Green Valley Primary, you'll be right after Major Cheney. And West Birdville Primary. Come on down, you're right behind Green Valley, West Birdville primary team, please come forward. West Birdville primary team, we need you at the front, please. Congratulations. <laughs> West Birdville, primary team. Okay, Green Valley, you're, you will be next. OH Stowe, primary team. You're right behind West Birdville. West Birdville. <laughs> okay. Okay, Green Valley, primary team, you're up. And W.A. Porter, you'll be right after O.H. Stowe. W.A. Porter, come right over here, please. I'm sorry, Green Valley is second place. We're good with that, right? West Birdville. 
All right, West Birdville, please come forward. Second place. Okay, hold on just one minute. Porter. This is West Birdville. Porter, we need you right over here behind Stowe. This is West Hill, second place. Okay, Green Valley El Intermediate. Green Valley Intermediate Team, right behind Porter, please. First place, L.A. Stowe. Congratulations. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. First is primary, next intermediate, then the whole team. Fantastic. Congratulations. First place primary. Next up will be Green Valley Intermediate for third place. David E. Smith, Intermediate Team, you're right behind Green Valley, please. And Foster Village Intermediate Team, you're right behind David E. Smith. <laughs>
Congratulations, Porter. All right. Third place, Intermediate Green Valley. Northridge Intermediate, if you'll come right behind Foster Village, please. Northridge Intermediate. Congratulations, Green Valley. David E. Smith, third place, intermediate. Next will be Foster Village. Northridge is right after Foster Village. And Walker Creek, intermediate team. You'll be right behind Northridge. Walker Creek right over here. Right behind Northridge, please. Great, Foster Village, third place, intermediate. Congratulations, David E. Smith. That's fantastic. Yes, two. Congratulations, Foster Village. Northridge, intermediate, second place. Foster Village. Congratulations, Northridge and Walker Creek, second place, intermediates. 